Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. The show has an NL East matchup. It's the Miami Marlins going up against the Atlanta Braves. Along with my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shami. And Chris, we've got an opportunity to watch one of the true superstars in the sport. Ronald Acuna Jr., always exciting to see him in action. And it seems like he consistently finds a way to impact the game. Yeah, Boogie, it's offensively at the plate, defensively he when he's on the bases. Four, and this guy's just a heads-up player, but he's got so much talent, mm -hmm. and he makes the All most right. of that. I believe it starts with his preparation because you never see him give away an at-bat. The spin rate on the curveball is incredible. Hitters know they're going to see a lot of them today. Stay back, be patient, and hit the ball the other way. The pitch. On the ground right side. On to first. Out. One up, one down. And time now for the Marlins lineup. And no doubt a big factor in this series so far, Brian De La Cruz. Well, these days we know teams, you know, they put a game plan together for every hitter in a lineup. But a guy like this, they circle him. Make sure he doesn't beat you. Uh, so you know they put in a little extra time and effort and on how they're going to approach him. He can be a huge well, difference one. maker when he's hot. So it's going to be fun to see how they try to work him right here. And a foul ball, third base side. The lefty fires. Foul ball there. Got him swinging. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. He just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. That one at 95 missed up top. And that's ball one. Two down, nobody on. Ball, and another no. ball. Two balls, no strike. Hot shot to first base, and he snags it to end the inning. Miami down in order. And now the Braves, with their first chance to hit, were scoreless. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back at Truist Park, and starting this one, Trevor Rogers. Four-pitch guy, he's got some options to work with in terms of keeping hitters off balance. So we'll see how he decides to utilize those weapons through this start here, and whether or not he's able to mix them all in early, or if he wants to hold something back a little bit later, maybe second, third time through the order, and give them something they haven't seen. It's tough when you know a guy's got that in his back pocket. As a hitter, you really have to stay on your toes. Ball Next one. one misses, and it's a ball to strike. So, Boog, here's an interesting fact about Acuna. He has the most home runs at Truist Park. He passed Freddie Freeman for the top spot in 2023, and I think he might hold that record for a while. The wind of the pitch. That misses the zone, and the count's even at two. Wouldn't chase that time. Popped up to the left, into foul ground, drifts towards it. One down. Here's Brian Snickers lined up for the Braves. Of course, a big piece for them is their DH, Marcelo Zuna. Well, right in the middle of this lineup, and that's exactly where he belongs. I mean, he's there for a reason, Boog. This guy, they know they can rely on him, and he's a force, a presence there that, you know, puts a little trepidation in that opposing pitcher. We'll see what kind of impact he has in this one. 
That one to first. Bell he steps on the bag. Two up, two down. Good late bite on that slider. Got yeah. the hitter out in front. Rolled over on it. Exactly what he was supposed to do. Here's Austin Riley. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. And that's outside. And that's ball one. One ball. Rogers, no 26 years old, and he's one of the few players in Major League Baseball born in New Mexico. He swings and fouls one off. Two outs, bases empty. Ball and two. another ball. Two one. A little out front there as he swings through it. And he really sells the changeup with that arm action. Here's a 2 2. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Three up, three down, inning over. And the Braves go down quietly, scoreless after one. And welcome back to the ballpark. Josh Bell at the plate now. The pitch. That one at 95 missed up top, and it's one to no. Wouldn't chase that time. Time to look at our umpiring crew in this one. Kenny Jansen behind the plate. Yeah, and expect a little inconsistency on the corners. He doesn't make any wild calls, but he does give and take there a little bit, so he doesn't have the easiest strike zone to figure out, especially as the game goes on That's when you're try. expecting it to become more consistent. Very high with that one. Three and one. What about an umpire's height? How much of a role does that play in your experience and what the strike zone is like? Yeah, I think it pushes the strike zone up a little bit, which, you know, as a former hitter, you like that. You wanted the ball up. You didn't want to have to deal with stuff down in the zone consistently. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Harris has a beat on it. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. On the ground to short, Arcia. Jump throw to first, and he beats yeah. it. The effort was there with the jump throw. You got to love it, but it just wasn't in time. Still a really impressive play just to get to that ball and make it close at first, and not every shortstop can even make that play. Here's Tim Anderson. A little bit high. And that is ball one. Here comes a pitch. The shortstop takes the ball. That one hit to right. Acuna after it. Two down. Here's the left fielder, Nick Gordon. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate. Try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Gets the call. Strike one. With the go-ahead run at first, here at the top of the second. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side.
Swing and a broken bat roller towards third. And he can't come up with it. And no shot to get him at first. There's two aboard. Otto Lopez, the next up for the Marlins. First offering, and it just misses. Second inning here, no score. That one close, ruled a ball. And the count is 2-0. Out there to center. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. Marlins strand a pair. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here in Atlanta, bottom half of inning number two. And now Matt Olson. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. One of the things that helped Olsen in 2023, a stance adjustment, and that as well kept him more balanced for less swing and miss. That pitch in for a strike, and it's 0-1. That's a little bit low. In the air, right center. This is matched way back and gone. A massive home run. His fourth home run of the season. The Braves score first. It's 1-0. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the booth. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. Here's Marcelo Zuna. And first offering is fouled off. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom half of inning number two. Swing and a high fly ball. Pretty well struck. Right field. Way back there. It has the distance. Gone. He nails one out to right. His second homer this series, and they add to their lead. It's 2-0. He just sparked this home crowd in a big way. What a swing. Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it, and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ball club. Here's Orlando Arcia. That catches the corner. And a pitch. Ball. Up and in, and it's two and one. That clips a corner. Two, two. This to third. Rolls across the diamond. One away. That ground ball may have him back on track after the homer. Jargo. And now it's Travis Darno at the plate. That one at 95 missed up top. One ball. ball no one. Sight. One out, base is empty.
Ripped to short, snagged on a bounce. Sends it across the first, and there's two down. Batting it. The left fielder, Jared Kelnick. Here's Jared Kelnick. There's the strike. Fought off foul. And now the lefty. Ball one. To the right side, the rise. Whips it to first. Play made, that ends the inning. But two round trippers in this inning, the long ball was working. It's now a 2-0 ball game. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. New inning getting started. Here's the catcher, Johnny Pareda, trying to pick up his first knock in the big leagues. And he deals. And that one just misses. A ball and no strikes. And a base hit into right center field. And that turns the lineup over. Johnny Pareda with his first major league hit. And this is a moment I'm sure he'll never forget. Congrats. Yeah, great moment for him and his family. A guy works so hard and has to wait so long for this to happen. And when it does, it can kind of be overwhelming, dude. You still have to stay locked in on the game, but it's great when you can take a minute to just appreciate what you've done and how hard you've worked to get here. Back to the top of the Miami order. Here's the second baseman, Luis Arias. First offering, runner goes. Pitch is low. Throw safe. Pretty close play on that one. A perfect throw probably gets him. That throw is just a little wide to the third base side of the bag, so he had to reach a little bit to get it. Could have been just enough to make the difference there. outside and it's two and one and that's a strike with the tying run at the plate we're here in the top half of inning number three spoils that one and it remains two and two Tying run at the plate. Still two and two after the foul ball. Well, he missed a hittable off-speed pitch right there. Not sure exactly what the timing. Sometimes you get a backup breaking ball. You're expecting it to make its move at the end. It never does. And you're tied up. Brian De La Cruz next to hit for the Marlins. It's in and out of his glove. But the throw to first gets him easily, and that's the first out. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And now here's the Marlins DH, Brian De La Cruz. Struck out swinging his first time. And that one missing low. One out. Next pitch is outside. Well, he looks more focused at the plate and working the count after that first at bat strikeout. Runner at second here, one gone. And another ball. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Jazz Chisholm Jr. waits on deck for Miami. The 
pitch. And a four pitch walk. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the plate was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. And at the plate for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. 0 for 1 so far. Fastball in for a strike. No one ball. One. At strike. the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boot. And that one fouled off. Pareda, the lead runner out at second. De La Cruz at first, one gone. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. That big strikeout right there, and maybe a little controversial with the call. I think he got a little bit of favor on the mound. No question about it. It's not exactly what you want to see in a big spot like that, and I'm sure there's some chirping going on from the dugout, making it clear that wasn't his best call behind the plate today. And now the switch hitting first baseman Josh Bell. Ball. ball one, no strikes. One ball, no strikes. So the tying run at second. Little chopper rolls foul. The one one. And yeah, that's in there at the knees for a strike. and fires that ball is foul and the pressure is building two outs a couple of base runners at first and second that's oh, off the mark two and two man oh man I don't know how you take that pitch that's as close as it gets That's outside. Full count now. So full both count. runners should be on the move here on the full count pitch. Yeah, this is a good chance to tie up this ball game. See if you can find some open grass in the outfield. Ah. Outside corner got him looking. He can't believe it. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Rogers back to work Let's and downstairs. Go. Next offering is in for a strike. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they are creeping into my mind right now. And a swing and a miss at the slider in the dirt. And it beats him for the first out after the drop third strike. Well, one of the things that hitters will do is they'll look for that red dot on the baseball as it's coming in to let them know what the pitch is. And if they see the red dot, it's typically a slider. But when a guy's got a really tight one with high spin rates, very difficult to determine. And that's probably why we saw a swing and miss right there. Just a nasty pitch. Acuna yeah. now at the plate as he swings oh, through strike one. That one finds the corner. Oh, and two now. Base is empty one away here in the last half of the third. That's that one ball. missing inside. Oh, 
and you. chase that time. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so many pitches and grinds out the at-bat. I'm sure there's some times where a pitcher would rather just give up a first pitch single than have to waste six or seven pitches on one hitter. One down, base is empty. Strike three. Got him looking on the changeup. Michael Harris digs in now. Grounded out his first time up. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. Left field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that ends the inning. And we're back. John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Jesus Sanchez. The pitch. That's in there. That's strike one. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. They tried to get him to chase on a slider one ball, one down strike. and away. Ball. Off the mark there, and it's two, two and ball. one. One strike. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. It's amazing to look up and see 88 miles per hour on that changeup. Back in the day, that was a pretty good fastball. But with high velocities these days, that speed differential is right where it needs to be. Left hand hitter waits. Bows it back with two strikes. The line to kick the pitch. That's to third. The throw to first. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Good arm side run and sink on that pitch right there. Got inside on him and got him to bounce into that out. Tim Anderson, the next up for the Marlins. And first offering is fouled off. Base is empty one away. Top half of inning number four. The 0-2. Ball one. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Not a great curveball there at all, but clearly he wasn't looking for it because it just dropped right into the happy zone. And it looked like, to me, the swing was a little bit late. Tells me he gave up on it early and then just tried to have that emergency hack at the last second to put it in play. Gordon, ball, no. the next to hit, takes ball one. That one pushed foul. Here's a 1-1. One, one. In the air, right field. And Acuna able to make the grab. And that'll do it. Three up, three down for him there. On now to the bottom of the fourth. It's the Braves two and the Marlins nothing. at Truist Park, ready to, ready to go for three. the last half of the inning. The Here's third the third baseman, baseman Austin oh, Riley. Yeah. And a pitch. A bit behind with that swing. It's strike one. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's oh. well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. Oh. And another ball. Oh. 
That one sizzling on its way through to the outfield. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. You put a great swing on that ball. Took the barrel right to it. Nice extension as well. 105 exit velocity. That tells you everything you need to know about that swing. Here is Matt Olson. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Left-hand batter waits Ball. and delivers outside. Three, Wouldn't two. chase that time. Two-two now, and that's okay. down and away. Riley aboard here at first with nobody out. There's a swing and a drive. That one is back. And it hits the fence. Throw comes in. Runner stop. Second and third. Nobody out. Back to back base hits. So close to blasting that one out of here the other way. But that's very tough to do when you take on the outfield gap like that. Beautiful swing, though. Let the ball get a little deep and drove it to the opposite field. Stepping in, Marcelo Zuna. He's already homered in this game. That one clips the outside corner. It's 0-1. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners that they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. Two in scoring position. Nobody out. We're here at the bottom of the fourth. Next offering is in for a strike. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Not close with that one. Now one and two. And a pitch. Down the line. And that drops foul. Not even close there. And the count is two and two. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for the strikeout. Here's the shortstop at the play. Orlando Arcia. Golden opportunity right here. Calling for the intentional walk, and that loads up the bases. And the force now play back. is now yes, in order. Now in for the Braves, Go, Travis Darno. Grounded out to short in his first trip. Now this is in the air down the line. And that's a foul ball. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield. That one ripped left field. That's down, one hops off the wall. Around third. Relay throw home. He's in there. Three run score. It's 5 0. How about that? Clears the bases. Absolutely hammered that baseball very loud coming off the bat. 107 was the exit velocity. And at that speed, it's going to be a great result more often than not. comes the skipper and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot that'll be it for Trevor Rogers and as he heads for the dugout we'll take a quick break new arm on the mound when we get back AJ Puck gets handed the rock out of the pen and with the big deficit on the scoreboard he almost has to just put that out of his mind Every outing matters for relievers and their numbers, but I think it's tough to get up for this type of appearance the same way you would for one in a close game. Now the left fielder, Jared Kelnick. He's 0 for 1. 
And first offering is fouled off. Kicks and deals. Whoa. And that's off the inside edge. One and more. it's one and one. And here it comes. And base hit. Travis Darno coming around third. He'll score. It's six nothing. Really stayed true on that swing. It wasn't an easy pitch. Lefty on lefty. Pitch was a little down, a little bit away, but he committed to it. And his shoulder stayed square to the plate. Didn't try to pull off that ball at all. And that's why it jumped off the bat. One gone runner at first. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Guillorme. Gets the outside corner with that one. Puck goes six feet, seven inches, 28 years old. And they went out and made a trade for him last season. Here comes the pitch. Runner breaks for second. That's in for a strike. Throw to second. Now. Now, I got to admit, I'm kind of shocked he got caught stealing right there because of how big the lead was over at first base. Catcher doesn't throw very well either, but for whatever reasons, things came together and they got the out at second. Really impressive job, I'd say. Swing and a miss. That one in the dirt. That completes the strikeout, and that'll do it. So it's four runs for him on four hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We played four. Braves six, and the Marlins nothing. Ready now for the fifth inning, and now for the Marlins, Otto Lopez. Otto Lopez. Free back to work. That one fouled off. And a pitch. Foul ball. The wind of the pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Johnny Pareda. And he's already singled in this game. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. That one, one is upstairs. One ball, one strike. Two Way upstairs. One. Two and one. I can't play around with him here. It's a six run lead at this point. Got to attack hitters, even if you give up a solo shot. In the air out to center. Harris makes the grab, and there's two gone. Marlins down to their final oh, wow. out. Luisa Rise stands in. Ooh. On the corner for a strike. Going one. Oh, Not yeah. sure if he could be in more of a group. Looks really relaxed. He's retired seven straight. This guy's feeling it right now. On the ground. And it That's goes up. just foul. Well, this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Swing and a miss, and he got him. That's the ball game. Whether you're a season ticket holder or you just come to a couple of games a year, to see your team win at home, there's just something special about that. Good job by this team to get it done for the hometown fans. 6 nothing is how this one ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chubby.
Thanks for joining us.